Greetings. Today we're going to discuss two more gas laws, Graham's Law and Dalton's Law. Graham's Law and Dalton's were both formulated in 1848 by Thomas Graham and John Dalton. John Dalton is the same guy as the Dalton of the atomic theory. There you go. All right. Before we get into these laws, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, background information, this diffusion and effusion. Diffusion is the movement of particles through a medium from a place of high concentration to a place of lower concentration. And diffusion is the movement of particles or the passing of particles through a tiny hole. Tiny space. A little bit on um, diffusion. Well, diffusion is the very reason why we can really enjoy a beautiful garden, not only through our eyes, but also through, also through our noses. We can actually enjoy the odor, but also sometimes we can uh, get kind of disgusted over certain odors, like possibly roadkill or a landfill. Why? Because these odors result most of them result from organic substances. That is, substances that contain carbon compounds. Inorganic substances usually do not give off an odor. There are a few exceptions. Uh, sulfur, ammonia, for example. But, for the most part, anytime there's an odor, that means carbon compounds are in the room, are present. Basically, organic compounds. The result is that these substances are volatile. So that means they evaporate readily. You have learned some about evaporation when we talked about the concept of equilibrium and vapor pressure. So if they evaporate readily, that means they go into the gas phase quickly. Here's an illustration of process of diffusion. High concentration, this would be in a medium, possibly water. It could also be air, as in the case of gases. And in this case, we have a gas moving into a, uh, the other side of this box, which uh, is a vacuum, and it is absorbing or taking in these particles through this tiny little hole. Now, let's take a look at a video clip about diffusion. A little demonstration of diffusion. I have water at 10 degrees Celsius, right straight out of the right, right straight out of the water cooler outside, and water at 60 degrees from the cooler as well. Take these out, and I'm going to place very quickly one and two drops of blue food coloring to our water. And I want you to focus on this is our hot water and this is our cold water on the rate of diffusion. This is diffusion in water, a little different than what we're talking about. We've been talking about diffusion of gases, but here we can illustrate the rate of diffusion in cold, cold versus hot. A little closer view, a little closer view. The hot water has achieved almost complete diffusion of the blue food coloring, while the cold water, it's still working on it. And of course we know, because of the kinetic theory, we know that the movement of particles has a lot to do with the rate of diffusion. The particles in the hot water were moving a lot faster, the molecules of water, 
and in the cold water, they move much more slowly. Let's hear from our very own biologist, our resident expert. Well, Mr. Sloshberg, how are you? Fine. I'd like to for you to tell us a little bit about how this concept ties into biology. Sure, I will. Diffusion, as you know, is just random mo movement of molecules and the energy in the environment allows for that to occur. The problem for living systems is that if molecules move randomly, cells could not choose to uh, put molecules they need into the cell and leave other molecules out. Using energy would, be, uh, would mean that the cell would have to take in food constantly to get enough energy to pump molecules back and forth, although they do that. That's not the main way, especially in dealing with water, and, and water is essential for living things. Instead, what the cell can do is to take advantage of the random diffusion of, of molecules of water by attracting the water to one side of the membrane or another using ions. Ions are what happens when you take a salt, put it in water, and it splits apart into ions. Those ions can be concentrated up on one side of the membrane or the other, thereby allowing the water to enter, which as you see on this side of the tube, the water goes up because it's going toward the ions, or take water away with the other side where there's less ions and therefore the water does not stay on that side. Uh, this process is diffusion. It doesn't require the cell to input any energy to make this happen. Therefore, cells can move substances around much more efficiently just by taking advantage of this principle of diffusion. Now, we're going to go ahead and apply Graham's Law and Dalton's Law. Graham's Law is basically is going to help us to determine the rate of diffusion, how quickly a substance diffuses from one point to another. It was based in original and effusion, but it can be also applied to diffusion of gases. Heavy gases move slowly, lighter gases diffuse faster. So a lower molecular mass results in faster diffusion. The formula that we use is rate one over rate two equals the molar mass, sometimes represented as mm, molar mass, uh, or the square root of the molar mass over the square root of uh, m1. Let's solve this problem. Let's say we have, at 25 degrees, helium, not he diffuses, but helium diffuses at 1360 meters per second. So we're going to set that as rate 1. Rate 1 equals 1360 meters per second for helium. And propane, which has a formula of C3H8, diffuses at what rate? We don't know. So we're going to go ahead and write down 1360 meters per second over rate 2, which we don't know. That's our x. This would be equal to the square root of the molar mass of our second substance over the square root of the molar mass of the first substance. Well, we know that helium, if we look at our periodic table, has a, the table has a molar mass of 4, four grams per mole. So I'm going to set because we know that helium diffuses at that, that's my rate one, M1, molar mass one, corresponds with it. Uh, so I'm going to write four, and I'll just round to that, uh, grams per mole. And over here, I know that roughly in my mind, I can calculate this, uh, carbon has a mass of 12 times three plus eight, Roughly, we're going to say it's about 44 grams per mole. Okay. When I calculated, I went ahead and did this ahead of time. So I calculated 1360 meters per second over x equals the square root of, I pre-calculated that and wrote it down, 
6.63. Uh, and uh, I calculated that, of course, of course, more mass of, um, of helium is 4. So therefore, the square root of 4 is 2. And when I cross multiply 13 times 60 times 2 divided by 6.3, it will give me a rate of 410 meters per second. So that's the rate at which the propane will diffuse. Finally, we're going to briefly talk about Dalton's Law, and we'll do more problems later on. Uh, the pressure of a gas mixture is the sum of the partial pressures. Uh, so therefore, I'm going to say P total equals pressure 1 plus pressure 2 plus pressure 3 and so on and so forth, as many pressures as I have. And to illustrate that, we see that all of these pressures, air is composed of all of these gases. Therefore, if the pressure of oxygen is 20.9, that would be the partial pressure 1, nitrogen partial pressure 2, argon partial pressure 3, and so on and so forth, I add them all up, and I get the partial pressure of air here. Okay, so based on that, I would like you to solve this problem, and I will give you the answer. Go ahead. Remember that pressure 1 plus pressure 2 plus pressure 3, and so on and so forth, is going to be equivalent to the total pressure. Solve the problem, and I will put up the answer. Have a great day.